Mercy Health Wapak Ford Field is the site of tonight's Region 24 final. Allen East, Marion Local, two teams that, depending on who you talk to, have been on a collision course since the season began in Region 24. And the number one and number two teams in the region are here in Wapak to see who advances to state. The pregame tonight and the keys to the game sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this home. Welcome back onto the field, Patrick Hamler, Scott Nurse, and as we look at the keys to the game for the David and Goliath version of this story, and we've said that quite a bit, but it pertains to tonight, what do these teams have to look for to get a win? Well, I got three keys tonight. Number one, it's go big or go home. Big plays. Alan East has had some huge plays, especially the past couple weeks. And Jacob Hershberger is a playmaker. He's a human highlight film. Marion Local's offense is explosive, too. They can score in a variety of ways. And the defense for both teams, they've got to limit the big plays and make the offense earn every score if they want to get the win. Number two, hang around early. Marion Local's outscored their opponents 353-20 to 20 in the first half, 183 in the first quarter. Allen East has to be close and be ready to play in the first quarter and keep it close. If they can do that, they put themselves in a position to find a way to win at the end. They cannot fall behind early and allow Marion Local to capture the momentum in the game. An uphill climb versus Marion Local is a tough road. And number three, value the ball. Allen East offense versus Marion Local's defense. Marion Local's defense has given up only four touchdowns in 13 games. They are outstanding. Allen East has to find a way to move the ball, have success on first and second downs, and stay ahead of the chains and stay within their offensive game plan. They cannot turn the ball over or have penalties that force them out of their game plan or it will cost them. Allen East possession means Marion Local's offense is off the field. Those are your Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. Will it be another year of flyer ball on Thanksgiving for Marion Local? Or will the Mustangs go where no Mustang team has ever gone before to the state semifinals? Marion Local making their 22nd appearance in a regional final. Allen East making their second. Recipe for a great matchup tonight here at Wapak. We'll have the kickoff when we come back here on WOSN. Welcome back to Mercy Health, Wapak Ford Field. Allen East and Marion Local about ready to get started. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Stites Grocery. Stop into Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full service meat and deli. Having a large event, Stites also caters. Give us a call in the instant replay sponsor, Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Just about ready to get underway here between Allen East and Marion Local. And these are the number one and number two seeds in Region 24. And it was an interesting thing to see how the postseason unfolded. Of course, 16 teams in each region making it this year. And in a lot of regions, it ended up being the number one versus the number two in the regional final. There were exceptions to that, of course. But here we are in this particular region with uh, the two best teams, I think, have been the two best teams the entire season in Region 24. Well, 13-0 and 12-1 and 1 says a lot, right? And, uh, yeah, I think both of these teams are very good, very well deserving of being here tonight. And I look forward to a really a close, competitive game. The officials tonight are the uh, referee is Ray Bradshaw. The umpire is Mark Widman. Headlinesman is Randy Adams. Line judge is Mike Holtzapple. Back judge is Don Craig, and the center judge is Kevin Four. So the snow, as you can see, is accumulating a little bit on the field. We had a pretty clear field about an hour ago, and then the snow cut loose. A nice little dusting on the field, but the conditions still really good. It's going to be a great night for football, and the kickoff is underway. Allen East with won the toss and will receive it. It's going to be Joe Hole who receives it at the 18-yard line and finding nowhere to go. He has stopped right about the place where he picked up the football, and that is where Allen East will start their first drive. And, of course, it is Jacob Hershberger, the 5'11", 165-pound senior, operating the offense for the Mustangs. Yeah, no question. He, he, I mentioned him at the top. He's a highlight film. He does a lot of things for this Allen East team. He, he's offense, defense, punts the football, returns the football. He's a key to, to what they do. 2,800 yards total offense this season for Jacob Hershberger, NWC Offensive Player of the Year. 
And here we go, first down and 10. Getting some directions from the sideline. And Hershberger is gonna tuck and run here on first down and not finding a lot of room, picks up a couple of yards. Gets across the 20 to the 23, and that is where Allen East will pick up second down. Well, you mentioned as you get a good look at this replay here, Jacob Hershberger comes in having 1,214 yards rushing. He also has passed for 1,660 yards. So as you mentioned, 2,800 total yards of offense from Jacob Hershberger. Ethan Heitkamp on the tackle, and now here is the handoff to Jack Hole, and he will push ahead for another yard or two. And that's going to make it a third down and about six. And with the with the swirling winds, the conditions aren't great for passing. You're probably going to see a lot of this from Allen East tonight. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, Jack Hole, excellent runner, 1,270 yards coming into tonight. Averages 5.9 per carry. He's got 21 touchdowns. Trips right on third down, play action. Hersberger looking across the middle, and the pass is tipped, tipped as there was pressure coming. And that'll bring up fourth down, so three and out. Great job for Marion Local's defense, and the Flyers' defense has been, I'm trying to think of a better word than stingy. Here's a replay, and you see that was uh, number 28 getting the hand on it. Drew Seitz able to knock that one down. Well, I mentioned in the pregame, 353 to 20 in the first half, Marion Local has outscored their opponents. That's great defense. Able to get that one down, and the punt, I don't know if that was tipped. It was like it went off maybe the edge of Hershberger's foot. Anyway, it goes out at around the 43-yard line, so Marion Local with a short field to start their first drive. And so far, this has been about as good a start as you could hope for for the Flyers. Yeah, and it's not the start that Allen East wanted. You know, they, they, they need to have some success early here to stay in this game uh, because of the fact that you mentioned, you know, Marion Locals used to be in here. They've been here, they're experienced. Allen East is not. So you, you, you want to try to keep this game close. Ball on the 43 yard line. It'll be first down and 10. In the backfield is Kyle Audi. And Audi will take the direct snap, go on to the left side, and is wrapped up at around the 40 yard line as that is. Number 16, Cade Wireman in on the tackle for Allen East. Kyle Ade comes in tonight with 888 yards rushing, averages 9.3 a carry. He's got 13 touchdowns. He's just a tough runner, strong, powerful legs. He's their power back, or one of them, I should say. Emphasis on the one of them. Second down and seven. Now this is Tate Hess. He's going to roll to his right and gets... The corner a little bit about the 35, 34 yard line before he is brought down and that's going to set up a third down and short. And that's something that Marion Local does. You look at the sideline for the Flyers, there's just a lot of guys here. Here's a look at the replay of this. Yeah, play. Tate's carrying this ball in one hand, kind of loose. Uh, if I'm a coach, I'd probably like him to tighten that up a little bit, but he's a good runner. It comes in 444 yards, averages 8.2 a carry and has four touchdowns himself. You see Keaton Miller, their number one for Allen East, blew up the edge protection and had some nice pursuit on Hess, but just uh, able to win the foot race there. Now third down and one for the Flyers. And Hess with the handoff, and that's going to be a first down and then some to Drew Seitz as he gets across the 30 down to the 28-yard line. That's going to be a Flyer first down and a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, good hard running there. Nice job blocking at the offensive line. Sight's a big guy down there, 6'2", 225, senior. Uh, one of the many guys who runs the football for Marion Local. Just a, a load of guy to bring down. And here's the pitch. Kyle Audi going on the left side, first down, breaks the tackle, out across the 25, has a seam out across the 12 and pushed out of bounds at around the 10 yard line. Wireman and Hershberger in on the stop, but that is gonna be a Betty's Foods first down. And that's gonna put Marion Local in the Kneecamp Farm Market red zone for the first time tonight. Yeah, and as you see here, an opportunity to get that play. Uh, Carson Klum, number seven for Allen East, had an opportunity to take Adi down in the backfield or, or for a really short gain, wasn't able to do that. They pick up another first down. 
So the ball on the around the 12 yard line. Marion Local in business. Hess in the shotgun. Handoff going off tackle left side and Hershberger stopping the touchdown is Drew Laus. The six foot 180 pound sophomore getting the stop or getting the yardage rather and that's a another Betty's Nash natural foods first down. Yeah and as you see here a good mix of offense with Marion Local that's their fifth different carry uh, offensive running back carrying the football tonight already. Laus comes in averaging 8.4 a carry. First and goal, ball at the two, Hess under center. Man in motion, and here's the handoff, and diving into the end zone is Drew Seitz for the flyer touchdown. Mary Local makes the short field payoff, 43-yard drive, and they strike for six. Yeah, and he really wasn't touched here. He had a uh, clear path to the end zone, really wasn't touched until he was into the red there. That's a Citizens National Bank touchdown for Marion Local. And now the extra point try with a chance to make this 7 0 Marion Local here in the first quarter. Carson Bills, an excellent field goal and PAT kicker for Marion Local. And that one is through the uprights for the Innovative Office Solutions extra point. 8.27 left in the first quarter. Marion Local on top, 7 0. We'll be back. First down, sponsored by Betty's Natural Foods. It's your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. And tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Mary Local takes a short field and they make it pay. 43 yards to the house on the course of the drive. A Drew Seitz touchdown dive makes it 7-0 Marion Local. Well, in the first quarter, Marion Local is 183 to three this year. They've given up one field goal the entire year in the first quarter. So let's see, uh, let's see what Alan East can do against that. At one point, Marion Local had a 28, I think it was 28 quarter streak where they did not allow any points. And now Alan East will get another try here at the 15 yard line and nice return. That's Hershberger. And that will set up Allen East, I think somewhere around the 35 yard line. We'll see where they marked him out of bounds and head coach Joel Billings looking for a little bit better of an offensive sequence than they got in the three and out last drive. Yeah, and certainly a lot better conditions than they, they played in last week. Patrick, you and I did that down at Bell Fountain. It was, uh, the field was completely covered with snow, so a little better footing tonight. Here's Hole on the carry on first down and pushing ahead, actually able to break free. Got to run around the left side and gets out to the 40. So it looked like about a one or two yard pickup ends up getting about eight on first down. Here's the east side replay. Yeah, and Jack Hole's just, just a tough, tough, tough runner. He does not give up. You can see he continues to fight for every yard he can get. Nice run. Allen, he's set up and ready to go again. Hershberger getting calls from the sideline. Something that the Mustangs like to do is run uh, something of a tempo offense. They see a matchup that they like. Here's pressure, Hershberger able to get it away. Catch is made by Hole, but not going anywhere as coming up on the stop, Ryan Holman, number six. Yeah, just excellent coverage there on that pass. I, I like I like the play call. It's a short pass, high degree success here, but Holman reads it perfectly. Form tackle, hits him low, wraps, brings him down. So that'll make it third down and six. So we'll see what the approach is here. A couple guys in the backfield with Hershberger on third and six. Pressure coming, pass, cross, intended for Caleb Hopkins, number six, and that is gonna be fourth down coming up for Allen East. Yeah, and a pretty good uh, option there from Caleb Hopkins. He averages 14 yards a catch, but just a little bit wide here by Hershberger. Not able to convert on third down, so they got a punt again. Something we're seeing early on is there's a lot of 
almost plays, almost breaking a tackle, almost making that catch, almost peeling that block for Allen East. And those are those are the gaps, those are the margins where Marion Local uh, takes over and establishes their dominance. And the Flyers with another opportunity as this punt rolls out of bounds to the 31-yard line. So a longer field coming up for the Flyers and Marion Local ready to start their second drive. And I think this is a little bit early, but it's a little bit of a gut check uh, series for Allen, Allen East. You'd like to see them get a stop here and not allow the momentum to continue to build for Marion Local. So let's see what they can do here. And one of the benefits, well, I'll talk about it here after this first down play. Two men in the backfield on first down. Hess rolling to his right. Pass is complete around the 36. And that is Nathan Busher with the completion and getting the Betty's Foods first down. Ball marked out at the 45 yard line. Here is the east side replay of it. Busher making his 19th catch of the season. Yeah, he averages 19.2 a catch, and you can see why. He's tough, he's quick, he's got moves after he catches it. Another first down for Marion Local. Three in the backfield, fresh set of downs for Marion Local. Hess fakes the handoff and he hits a pass and he's gonna break free, Kyle Audie. I thought maybe the play was dead, but Audie's gonna take it to the house for a touchdown. Marion Local on a 54 yard pass to Kyle Audie and it's 13 nothing Marion Local on that Citizens National Bank touchdown. Yeah, just a little confusion here at the beginning of this play. I think that they thought Darren Meyer, I think that is, who had the football. And uh, Adi finds a little seam here, and then it's just a foot race. And Adi's got speed. And there was some initial confusion because I thought I heard a whistle. I thought maybe they blew the play dead, even though I saw that Hess still had the football. But Mary Local stays with it. Adi finds a seam on the right side and gets the touchdown. And this. Innovative Office Solutions extra point is good. So just like that, Marion Local has a 14-0 lead over Allen East. We'll be back. Tonight's Marion Local premier sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. And Nikan Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. A two-play 69-yard drive for Marion Local, culminating in a 54-yard touchdown pass from Tate Hess to Kyle Audi on a screen play, essentially, and that makes it 14-0 Marion Local. And go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, you know, we talked about that. One of the keys of the game is big plays, right? And uh, Allen East cannot allow Marion Local to have big plays. We knew that their offense is explosive. And uh, certainly they have exploded here already with one huge play uh, that puts them ahead 14-0 on the scoreboard. You know, this was a day where maybe the teams that were supposed to win were maybe caught looking a little bit as this punt fielded by Hirschberger all the way back to the five yard line and is brought down at the 18. Nice stick there by number 27 from Marion Local, Devin Francis. And that is where Allen East will start. You know, you had Michigan, who you thought maybe they overlooked Illinois a little bit today. You had Ohio State, maybe they overlooked uh, Maryland a little bit. Bay, uh, TCU, maybe they overlooked Baylor a little bit. <laughs> Marion Local's not gonna overlook anyone because Tim Goodwin's not gonna let it happen. Well, he just said, uh, yeah. They, and, and, and again, experience has a lot to do with it. They've been here. They've been here regularly every year, and uh, they know what to expect. They know what it takes, and they know what level to uh, level of play to bring to the field. Allen East ready to start their third drive. And they were out here about 40 seconds ago. Here's Hersberger on first down, gets to the 20 before he takes a stick and is brought down. Drew Seitz, among others, in on the stop for Marion Local. Well, and the challenge is Alan East has got to come up with something that's going to work for them, um, you know, but no one else all season long has been able to really come up with anything that works against this defense. But uh, Alan East is up against a tall task tonight for sure. That was Ethan Heitkamp who had the tackle on that play or assisted in on the tackle. Second down and eight. 
Hershberger back, pressure coming, lobs this one off to the left side and just a little too high. Pass intended for Trey Hensley, number 18 out there, and it's going to be third down. Well, that pass was just a little bit high, and I, I wonder, Patrick, you know, we were down there pregame. It's very, very windy down there, really windy tonight, and uh, I don't know if maybe that's having a little effect on Hershberger's pass because normally he's extremely accurate with his passing game, and uh, he's just been off a little bit the first few passes he's thrown tonight. Third and long, and Hershberger's going to take off from the middle and not finding a lot of space. Mary Local closing quickly, and that's going to bring up fourth down, pick up of maybe two on that play. Yeah, one of the things that Marion Local does really well as a unit is they all have a job to do, and they all do that job very well. And you can see Hershberger, uh, that was a design draw. Normally that goes for a pretty good pretty good chunk of yardage, and uh, Marion Local just closed quickly on that, nowhere to go. So fourth down and five, Hershberger back to punt. And they bring the pressure, and Hershberger able to get it off. And this one will roll, takes a nice Allen East bounce, a few of them actually, and it will roll all the way down to the 35 yard line. That's where Carson Klum will down it. And Marion Local will take over around the 35 yard line. So I think if you're Allen East at this point, the last thing that you want to have your guys do is panic and start thinking, uh-oh, here we go. This we, We've seen this a, a bunch of times this year, Marion Local, two quick scores, 14 nothing in the first quarter, it's over. Right. That, that's the last thing you want to happen over on the Allen East side. Well, as we saw last weekend, uh, Allen East is capable of big plays in a hurry. I mean, they can make a play in a hurry, and all of a sudden this game is turned around. So, uh, yeah, it, a lot of football ahead of us tonight. Hess pitches to Audie. Audie on that right side, and he is going to pick up about two yards before he is tackled. Cade Wireman with the leg grab and stop. Yeah, Cade Wireman, excellent defensive player, leads them in tackling. And you can see he just flows to the football. Nice job of wrapping up there and holding Audie for about a two-yard gain. Officials respotting the ball, making sure it's in the right spot. I wonder if the wind blew it. It's not entirely out of the realm of possibility tonight. No. Out on that field. Now here's Hess with a pitch. Going to that other side is Audi. Having to bounce out wide. And Trey Hensley is there wrapping him up. Nowhere to go. And pushed out of bounds around the 36-yard line. So uh, probably going to give him no gain on that play. And it'll be third down and long coming up. Yeah, and Marion Local continues to run the football towards the edge. They've run most of their plays tonight so far towards the outside, towards the boundary. And... Allen East doing a good job here of bottling up Adi, not allowing him to get any kind of gain. So under four minutes remaining. We have a flag and on the play. we do have a flag indeed, yes. Looks like it's going to be holding. It's going to go against Marion Local. So Allen East had two good defensive plays in a row, and now they get uh, a penalty on top of it. It's going to make it. Second down and about 22. Uh, that's closer to 31. You're right, 21, sorry. Sometimes math is hard. <laughs> I'll let Scott handle the numbers from here on out. Second yeah. down and 21. And they're going to go outside again. And looking for some space is Drew Laus and not finding a lot. Good close there by... Joe Hole in on the stop for Allen East, and that'll bring up third down and about 11. Yeah, Drew Laus, an excellent multi-dimensional back. You see him running the football here to the outside, but he also catches the football quite a bit too. He's got 334 yards receiving, averages 19 yards a catch in addition to his running that we talked about earlier. Keaton Lehman also in on the stop on that play. Brings up third down and 11. And it'd be a big victory for the Allen East defense if they can get off the field here. Hess rolling, right side, third and long, pass complete. Audi breaks a tackle, has the first down as he is dropped around the 46-yard line. That is going to be good enough for a Betty's Foods first down. And Marion Local able to convert on that third and long. Well, in two plays, they went 21 yards, and you see here uh, just a good 
perfect pass, put it exactly where it needed to be. Adi brings it in and then does just enough to get the first down. You know, Allen East had a chance there. One of the defenders you saw uh, had a hit on Adi, could have stopped him short of the first down, wasn't able to bring him down. Fresh sticks for the Flyers, and now Hess dropping back. Has time, now pressured by Lehman. Looks to the right side, pass complete. Audi all by himself. Has a Betty's Foods first down again as he's across the 45, tackled at the 43-yard line. And once again, Mary Local able to move the sticks. Well, as you see Tate roll out here, defensive coverage, secondary. Allen East has outstanding secondary coverage, but nobody picks up Audi right there. Wide open, easy pitch and catch for Hess and Audi. Enough for another Marion local first down. Coming up on two minutes remaining in the first quarter, Marion local on top, 14-0 on the Knights grocery scoreboard. Here's Laos up the middle, and he picks up about four yards. He's out across the 40 to the 39. Well, I feel like Allen East is doing a pretty good job in, this, in the middle of the defense. They're doing a really good job. That front four for Allen East is holding Marion Local to pretty short yardage. The only big yardage they picked up has been on the edge runs, on the outside runs, and then a couple passes to the outside. So those, just those little near misses, those little, those little tweaks that were going out in East Way last week just aren't so far. And here's Laos again, I believe, up the middle. And he's around the 35, 36 yard line. Yeah, again, another pretty good play by that uh, inside, that interior of the Allen East defense. Get a good look there at 52, Gage Wireman making the tackle. A Neifert checking in for Marion Local. Mostly on the defensive side, but he comes in. Third down and three. Opportunity for the Flyers to get another third down conversion. Man in motion, that's going to be Laos. Takes the ball left side, and the he was upended. Hershberger in there, but able to get enough yardage for a Betty's Foods first down. Yeah, I like this. Just a little inside counter. It's uh, technically a pass play there as the ball moves forward. And you can see Laos uh, picks up that first down by about three yards. Brogan Paxson in there on the stop. Hershberger with the trip, making first contact. And another fresh set of downs for Marion Local. Ball at the 30-yard line as we come up on 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Probably going to be the last play of this first quarter. Direct snap to Audi going right side and following his blockers and picks up a nice chunk of yardage. That'll make it second down and about four. Yeah, and I, I, I like that play by Marion Local. Early in the year, Adi threw one. He's, uh, he's thrown it actually seven times, got a touchdown. I happened to be doing the game when he threw a touchdown. So you have to play him honestly, but the good part about that is, is you don't waste a player with the quarterback. You've got all 10 guys blocking for that one. First quarter in the books from Wapak, and it's Marion Local with a 14-0 lead over Allen East. Second quarter on the way here on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. And Innovative Office Solutions is your local office furniture expert. Visit us at ios-inc.com. They are our extra point sponsor tonight. Second down in three as we begin the second quarter. From Mercy Health, Wapak Ford Field, Mary Local on top, 14-0. Here is Adi rolling once again out across the 10 to the 8-yard line. Good for another Betty's Natural Foods first down as they are in the Neecamp Farm Market Red Zone once again. Third, the second time tonight that Marion Local has been in there and an opportunity to put another touchdown on the board. Yeah, and you can see the snow is really swirling now. The wind's swirling, the snow's coming down, and I feel like this is what Kyle Adi loves. You know, he's a, he's a football player, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the elements don't bother him. He just loves playing football. So the snow has picked up quite a bit over the last few minutes. Thought we were done with it. Oh, we got a but false start on Marion Local, so that pushes them back a bit. So that'll back things up. See, Tib Goodwin there on the left side of your screen was getting an explanation. So that'll back up Marion Local. 
I say, yeah, the false start back him up five yards. I thought they were going back further than that for a second, but so that'll make it second down and eight. Yeah, and you can see the snow is definitely picked up, Patrick. So that'll put the ball back at the 28-yard line. Hess in the gun, along with Laos. Laos getting the handoff, going for that same space, and gets out to the 21-yard line before Jack Hole comes up with the tackle. Yeah, and just a little inside handoff, kind of a counter play there. Everything looked like the offense was going to go to the wide side of the field. They come back with a little inside handoff, and Laos makes a couple guys miss and picks up about six yards, so it's going to be third and about one. Jack Hole is not one of the Mustangs that sees a lot of time over on the defensive side. Be sure you to watch that one as this one unfolds. The pitch to Audie makes a nice cut going inside and in for six. Audie with a Citizens National Bank touchdown, and that's 20 to nothing, Marion Local. Yeah, and they had a full house backfield, three blockers led. That's an old play St. John's actually used to run as well, where the quarterback's one of the lead blockers. You see Hess out there blocking and Adi gets into the end zone untouched. Good blocking and just a nice cut back inside, as you said, Scott, and it's 20-0 Marion Local. Coming up with the Innovative Office Solutions extra point, and it is up and good. 10.49 remaining in the first half, and Marion Local asserting their dominance. 21 to nothing over Allen East. We'll be back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Stites Grocery. Stop into Stites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full-service meat, and deli. Having a large event, Stites also caters. Give them a call. And tonight's instant replay sponsor, Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Flyers punch it in again and lead 21-0 on the Sites Grocery scoreboard over Allen East. And if you've been following Marion local football all season, you, you're getting pretty much what you've seen all season long. Well, this is the fourth time I've uh, had the opportunity to do Marion local this year for TV 44. And uh, this looks like what we've seen before. I mean, they're, they're, they're so strong at every position and they make you pay for any mistake that you make. The feeling in this one, here's the kickoff. Bit of a squibber. This is going to roll all the way into the end zone. And glad that the wind didn't get, <laughs> catch that ball and just park it at the two-yard line. It'll be a touchback. Allen East will take over to 25. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where the understanding was Allen East coming into this game had to execute just about flawlessly. Like, they had to be as good as they could possibly be at every facet of the game. And you've seen, like, little misses here and there, little things, nothing nothing major. There's been nothing catastrophic over on the Allen East side. It's just these little things, and, Al and uh, Marion Local has been able to take advantage of every single miscue. Right, and th those miscues might be things like just to pass a little bit off, so not able to convert on a third down. Hershberger on a run on first down, gets across the 20 out to the 21-yard line. I feel like one of the factors, though, in this game is since uh, in, in not not the only factor. Obviously, Marion Local is a really good team, but uh, the snow and the wind has sort of been a limiting factor on what Allen East can normally do because normally they're high-powered offense. They run run the football. Hershberger can make all kinds of moves that are probably difficult on a surface like we have tonight. Normally, they throw the ball uh, very effectively. Very difficult to throw out tonight with swirling winds and, and, and high winds that we have here tonight. Here on second down, Hershberger going to the air and almost intercepted Aiden Eifert, almost coming up with what would have been his second interception of the season. And instead, it'll be third down and seven for Allen East. Here's another look at it. Yeah, Eifert is one of their top defensive players. Uh, he has one interception on the year, but I know he's got uh, a number of of pass breakups and just an excellent defensive corner. 
31 tackles this season, two for loss, two sacks also. And now Hersberger, screen pass on third down, and Eifert gets it this time. Eifert gets the interception, and the Flyers force the first turnover of the evening. Well, that ball was up in the air for a long time. You see it floating up there, and Eifert just steps in, makes the grab, and uh, had an opportunity there for a pick six, but sets Marion Local up with great field position. Gage Wireman with the, you gotta think the touchdown saving tackle is Marion Local will start this drive in the Knee Camp Farm Market end zone, or red zone rather, and they might be in the end zone here pretty soon. Hess in the gun, first and 10. In motion here is Laos. Going on that right side, and the Allenies pursuit a good one. Keaton Lehman in on the stop, able we, to pick up about five or six yards on that carry. We saw this play on third down in the first quarter where they converted for a first down, the exact same play, and you can see uh, Laos just uh, getting him into space and allowing him to sort of find the seam and pick up enough to, for, you know, five yards. It makes it tricky if the conditions are getting worse and the footing's getting harder and harder to get your footing on. It's easier if you know where you're going. It's not so easy if you're trying to figure out where the other guy is going. Here's Laos again going on that left side, and he gets inside the five to the four-yard line as Carson Klum in on the stop for Allen East. Yeah, and that was the same play just to the left side this time. And uh, about the same result, they pick up a first down. It's going to be first and goal from about the two-yard line. So that's a Betty's Foods first down, and here's a, another look at it. Our down cam is right there, and the wind is, is picking up. This is a winter wonderland or a nightmare. It kind of depends on your, on your view of things. And pushing inside. And that is going to be a touchdown for Marion Local. Kyle Audi. Taking it in for the touchdown, and that'll make it 27-0 Flyers. Yeah, and that's a power football from the two-yard line there. Followed the uh, fullback into the end zone in that two gap. So the Citizens National Bank touchdown, and now coming up once again for the... You can see the, pole, the, the goal, goal posts are shaking, and... Innovative Office Solutions extra point is up and good. Well, I saw one official mark it good, and the other one. Uh, I oh, think we got I, a false start on Mary Local, so we're going to do it again. So it's 27 nothing still. So they're going to attempt the extra point again. And, of course, these are the conditions where you absolutely want to try a kick again. Yeah, and uh, you can see there the goal posts, the, the, the flags are flying, and you can see they're actually moving. It's that windy out that it's moving the goalposts yeah. around. So here's another opportunity, and once again, <laughs> no problem for Carson Bills, the sophomore. Money! Marion Local up 28-0. First down sponsor tonight, Betty's Natural Foods. Your partner for better health, visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. And tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419 419- 225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. An eighth and Eifert, Aiden Eifert interception turns into seven more points for Marion Local and the Flyers no doubt looking at the success that they are having on the field in all phases at this point as the Flyers asserting themselves as quite possibly the best team in Division Six, hole with the return and has a little bit of a seam there on the right side, making some guys miss. And he's brought down at the 38-yard line, so a positive occurrence for Allen East, and they could use that. There has not been a lot that has gone the Mustangs' way here in the first half. Yeah, pretty good field position here to start with. Just a nice run, a little bit of loss of footing there at the beginning, and then uh, 
really good return there. About five or six more yards after contact. Not surprised by him. He's tough. So Hershberger with Hole in the backfield with him here on first down, and Hole is going to get the ball first, and nothing doing in the backfield for the stop. A host of flyers in on the tackle. Drew Seitz in there somewhere, and he had a lot of help from his friends, second down and long. Yeah, there are about nine yellow helmets in the area here after Seitz initially uh, corrals him. They give Jake Top, actually, like he was the guy first on the scene there, his seventh tackle for loss of the season. And now second down and 11. Hershberger looking to the sideline. Coming up on less than eight minutes. We are less than eight minutes here. Pressure coming in trouble. Hershberger gets this one away and just throws it away to avoid the sack. But the pressure was coming hot and heavy there from Marion Local. Yeah, it looked like number six, Ryan Homan, was in there with the most pressure, and Hershberger did the smart thing, just threw it away. Bringing up third down and 11. And the Mustangs have not been able to establish much of a rhythm offensively. In the gun, third and long. Pressure coming, Hershberger stands in there, makes the throw, pass over the head of Trey Hensley. That's who was his intended target. Carter Jones in there on defense, and that will bring up another punt situation. Well, Marion Local doing a really good job of penetration. You can see here Hershberger has to hurry, and I think that's why his throws have been a little off tonight. He's had to hurry, get rid of the ball quicker than he's normally used to, and uh, it's caused a little bit of uh, you know some errant throws. So fourth down, and Hershberger punts this one away. And I, I think that was partially tipped. Whether it was, and I think you're right, it might have been partially tipped, but either tipped or wind. Straight punts are going to be kind of a luxury here tonight. This one rolls out of bounds at the 41-yard line of Marion Local. So that's where the Flyers will take over. And you think, if you're an Allen East fan, oh, great, Marion Local with another short field. I wonder how this will turn out. Yeah, they got a uh, great field position again to start their offense. And plenty of time on the clock at 7.34. So the Flyers in business at the 41, first and 10. Fake the pitch, Hess. Going got a for man. home, and the pass is caught with one hand. Nathan Busher brings it in, still on his feet, down at the 10-yard line for a Betty's Foods first down, and Busher says, look, Ma, one hand. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. That was into the wind, and Hess puts it perfectly on the mark. Busher comes in with 350 yards, averages 19.2, and just reaches out with one hand, pulls it in. And Hershberger, had he not been able to hold on there, that would have been six on the board. Hershberger with Carson Klum in on the stop, and that's, I mean, Hershberger, I don't think could have provided any much better coverage than he did. Just outstanding placement, and now here is Laos in the Kneecamp Farm Market red zone, well, making that, guys miss across the five to the three yard line. That's that same play they've ran several times tonight, and, and they're getting about five yards, six yards every time they run it, so they keep coming back to it. You know, and coming into this game, Patrick, I, I feel like uh, Allen East secondary is outstanding. They have excellent defensive backs, great corners, uh, really good defensive secondary. And uh, as you mentioned, that was just a great defensive play by Hershberger, but Busher yeah. was able to haul it in. Indeed he did. Here's Laos working on that right side, and he is going to be stopped. And Laos coming up oh, with his lost his shoe. I saw, him, I saw him limping. I thought, did he get hurt? No, he's just lost his shoe. Here's another look at it. The definition of a shoestring tackle, right? Yeah, absolutely. By uh, number 52 for Allen East, that's Gage Wireman. Gage Wireman was lace man there. 
making the tackle. Too much? Is that too much? We're, we're reaching for that one. Yeah. Shoestring budget here, folks, on jokes. Here we go. <laughs> Kyle Otte, no problem. Touchdown, Marion Local. For the Citizens National Bank, touchdown. And the Flyers have gotten us just about into running clock territory. Yeah, of course, that doesn't begin until second half, but clearly Marion Local has, has uh, asserted their dominance, as you mentioned. Flyers up 34 to nothing. 5.46 remaining in the first half, and Carson Bills on to attempt the Innovative Office Solutions extra point, and this one goes wide right. 34 0 Flyers with 5.46 remaining on the Sites Grocery Scoreboard. We'll be back. Welcome back. Tonight's Marion Local Premier Sponsor is OPAC and Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. And Nikan Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998, is a Red Zone sponsor on State Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. 34-0, Marion Local on top of Allen East as the Flyers, barring something absolutely unheard of, are going to be in the state semifinals next week, and this would represent their 30th win in a row. Marion Local has not lost since 2020. Well, and they've got 12 state championships. Uh, like I said before, they, you know, they've been there. They've been through this, uh, through this gauntlet before, and so that experience does pay off. That last loss, of course, was to the New Bremen Cardinals, who won the state title that year. New Bremen with the come from behind win to uh, get the job done and quite possibly the last time you saw any miscues from a Marion local team in a game might have been uh, in that one but ever since then this Marion local team has been perfect if they hold on to win tonight it'll be their 30th win in a row which by the way is not even the longest of Tim Goodwin's career here at Marion local wow Kick fielded at the 10-yard line by Hole of Allen East and has a full head of steam, and that gets him to the 36-yard line before he's brought down. And 5.38 remaining, Allen East back on the field again. Yeah, I'd, li I'd, li I'd like to see them have some success here. You know, Allen East, it'd be, it'd be good for them if they could somehow manufacture a score here before they go in at halftime, make them feel good, make them feel like, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a, uh, a hope there. Uh, but they have not had much success offensively thus far in the game. You know, you mentioned Tim Goodwin, though. Um, you know, it's excellent, excellent coaching as you as you see a penalty here being walked off against Allen East. It's going to back him to the 20-yard line. But, you know, that sustained long success that Marion Locals had, you have to attribute a lot of that to the coaching and the coaching staff and, and you know, just community involvement and the way that they, uh, you know, value football in this in that area uh, and the work ethic that goes into that. Because, uh, you know, a lot of the smaller schools have, you know, a player or two players or a few players where they, they kind of peak for a little while and then go away. But Marion Local has been able to peak and stay at that peak for uh, forever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, that really says a lot about the coaching staff. Hershberger with a modest gain on first down. Now second down and nine. Getting it to Hole and Hole going back inside and not finding a whole lot of space there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Yeah, well, there were three Marion local defenders out there on the edge. Hole knew that uh, he probably wasn't going to get much that way, so he tried to bring it back inside. Maybe, maybe picked up a yard. So that'll bring up third down and nine. Allen East still looking for their first first down of the contest. Hershberger dropping back under pressure. Pass complete to Carson Klum at the 29-yard line. He is forced out of bounds, and that's going to be it's going to be close. About it's a yard short, I think. Fourth and about a yard, and it looks like Allen East is going to go for it here. 
Here's another replay. This is Clum's first catch of the game, and indeed they are going to go for it, and you got to think, why not? Well, this is huge, actually, with 422 left. If they don't get this, it really gives Marion Local another short field. Hershberger on the keeper, trying to follow his blockers, and I think he's this gonna is be going to be close, but I don't think he got it. Well, it looks like uh, the, the line judge is running in. He's marking it just across the 30-yard line, and the, the sticks are at the 30-yard line, so it's going to be close. They're, give, they're giving him the first down. So that is going to be a Betty's Foods first down for Allen East, their first one. You see Hershberger. Glad to see his neck still attached. That was an awkward <laughs> angle. <laughs> Sir Jacob's thinking it felt a little awkward too. Yeah, that's good. I love the effort though. Brings a fresh set of downs, hand off to hole up the middle on first down, gets to the 32, and that's it. Well, again, you got to start somewhere. They pick up a first down, so they're moving the ball a little bit. It's good to see for the Allen East offense. <coughs> Allen East with only one loss on the season, a 53-21 defeat to Elmwood back early in the football season. Of course, Elmwood's season ended last night by Liberty Center in the Region 18 final. Here's Hersberger back to throw. Pass complete over the middle. Keaton Lehman, his first catch of the night out to the 43, 44 yard line. And that's gonna be a Betty's Foods first down. Yeah, Keaton Lehman is their number one threat for Allen East. He's got 691 yards, 42 catches coming in and three touchdowns. And you can see with Hersberger, if he has a little bit of time, he's gonna be successful. Nice pass play, cross the middle, pick up a second first down. Now he's going to carry it again on first down. Gets about four before he is dropped. He didn't get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run as we go under three minutes. Allen East beginning to move the football a little bit here, Patrick. Indeed, this is the longest drive for the Mustangs so far. You got to think maybe that fourth down try energized them a little bit, gave them a little bit of confidence, see if they can get back into their offense. And, you know, who knows? There's, there's a lot of football left. There's a lot of time on the clock. But only four on the play clock. And they get that off in time. Hertzberger oh. pass tipped and incomplete. Eifert once again getting his hands on it, and he almost had his second interception of the night. Yeah, he's got two pass breakups already tonight and one interception. That was dangerous right there. Here's a look at it, and that's that's the same area, pass intended for Caleb Hopkins, and that's the same area where Eifert had the interception earlier this quarter. Third down and six. Hand off to Hole, powering his way up the middle, across midfield to the 49, and that'll bring up a fourth down and four, and, and timeout, official timeout. And I would imagine you're probably going to see Allen East keep the offense on the field and, and go for it. Yeah, I think uh, they're directing number 33 for Marion Local. That's Connor Bruns off the field. I think there was an equipment issue. So he heads out. Nick Ranley might have replaced him. I don't know that for certain, but this is for certain. Allen, he's going for it on fourth down. Hershberger going to the left side. Going to try and make the guys miss and does track from behind. And this is going to be close again. It's going to depend on where the spot is. Yeah, and I think he's going to be a little short. They got the first down sticks right at the 45-yard line. They marked the football at about the 45 and a half, almost 46-yard line. I think it's going to be short. And I think they're going to signal local first down Marion Local yep. indeed. Nice shot by our uh, cameraman there getting where Hershberger's knee went down. And it went down right at the 46-yard line, which was about maybe a half yard or a yard short of the first down. So now the Flyers will take over with a minute 45 remaining. Well, you got to feel good a little bit. 
Brown East there, they started on their own 20, moved the football across midfield to the 46 yard line. So a little bit of success. They're not gonna go away. Absolutely not. Uh, Marion Local. Hess looking to throw, pressure coming. Miller giving chase, Lehman giving chase, gets the seam and keep running. He's gonna be pushed out of bounds at the 27 yard line as he picks up a Betty's Foods first down. And Hess who doesn't do a ton of running, picked up a lot of yards with his legs right there. Yeah, he did. Uh, and you can see when he goes to pass here, just a little hesitation right there, boom. And the defensive players bit on the outside. There was nobody else out there to contain him. And he picks up about 26 yards before he goes out of bounds. Looks like he almost tight roped for about 10 of those. He's agile, Patrick. Yes, yes. he is. <laughs> Has looking back to throw again. Going over the middle. Has Audi complete touchdown, Flyers. Wow, and Adi just ran a straight post route there. Hess led him to the middle of the field, and Adi adjusted his route and came right under the football. Well-thrown football by Hess here as you get a look. There's the east side insurance replay, and as you said, just runs over the middle, gets the opening. Caden Hedrick in there on the defense. 40-0. Is that Adi's fourth touchdown tonight then? I believe it is, yes. And the kick is up. And the Innovative Office Solutions extra point is good following the Citizens National Bank touchdown. 41 nothing. Mary and Local will be back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Well, there have been six of them. And Innovative Office Solutions is your local office furniture expert. They are the Extra Point sponsor. Visit us at ios.inc-inc.com. Well, there's been plenty of touchdowns and extra points in this one. Marion Local with a 41 to nothing lead over Allen East. Patrick Handler, Scott Nurse here with you. And uh, much to the chagrin, I would imagine, of Allen East fans, this one has gone probably like a lot of people in the area thought it would. Yeah, except for those that are at Allen East. And, uh, you know, you, you feel like, uh, you know, I feel bad for Allen East, really, because mm -hmm. this is not the way they wanted to play this game. This is not uh, actually not how I thought it would go. I thought it would be a little more competitive than this. Uh, but the key was, as we mentioned, is Allen East had to stay close early. Yeah, They couldn't allow Marion Loco to get those early scores because then you're digging out of a hole, you're playing from behind, the momentum shifts, you try to do things that you don't normally do and get out of your game plan, and uh, that's worked certainly to Marion Loco's favor. Hole with the carry on first down, picks up about a yard, and, you know, this is not a team in Marion Loco that, of course, you know, not a lot of losses over the last, you know, pick a period of time over the last few years, certainly, and even that, that loss we mentioned that they had to New Bremen, which was a New Bremen come from behind win, uh, they were not. They were down by three. And I'm, oh, I'll take that back. They were down by a touchdown, I believe. And they came back and made it happen. And a 41-point deficit is what Alan East is looking at right now. And you're thinking, you know, right now you want to you want to salvage some pride. You want to run your offense. You still want to compete and do things. And you see Jacob Hershberger running to the outside of the 45-yard line. Uh, he's still competing. Allen East is still competing. They're still out there. They're still out there playing hard football. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they'd like to put some points on the board. Um, but you're right. 41-0 is a, is a big hole for anybody to dig out of. As you get a good look there at Hershberger, he's got speed. He's got he's an explosive player. The snow has stopped, which is a good sign. It was getting pretty difficult to see there for a while. I'm starting to wonder if maybe we're in a blizzard here. Hershberger hangs on to it, and he is met in the backfield on third and two. So he stopped for a loss, and that'll bring up fourth down if we bother running the play with the final 20 seconds in the half. 
Yeah, and that was just a case, Patrick, you alluded to it earlier, where if you make a mistake, even a little one, you pay for it. And uh, there was a little bit of a bobbled snap there by Jacob Hershberger on that. And before he could gain the handle again, there's three or four Marion local defenders bringing him down to the turf. Well, that is going to do it for half number one. And Marion local on their way, 41-0. They lead over Allen East. We'll be back for the third quarter after halftime when we return on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Sites Grocery. Stop into Sites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full service meat, and deli. Having a large event, Sites also caters. Give us a call. Just about ready to get the third quarter started here from Mercy Health Wapak Ford Field, and it is all Mary Local over Allen East in the Region 24 final. 41-0 Mary Local with the lead over the Allen East Mustangs, Patrick Handler, Scott Nurse, and as we've seen so many times and as Mary Local fans have seen so many times over the years, especially this season, everything's gone pretty much Mary Local's way in the first half. Yeah, no question about it. Obviously, 41 uh, most everything <laughs> went their way the first half. And so we're into a running clock situation in the second half. That clock will continue to run except for when uh, there's a score or a timeout or an injury. And uh, the second half is probably going to go pretty quick. If Marion or if Allen East gets the deficit below 30 points, of course, the running clock will stop. But if Marion Local gets that back over 30, then the the rules that Scott just mentioned uh, will kick back into focus. And if you look at Allen East as they're getting ready to kick the football off, and you look at what they did in the first half, and it's hard to look at anything that was – terrible it was hard to see anything like it just the the plays that were clicking for Allen East earlier this year just weren't working the the scheme just wasn't working this 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 first half right and uh you know it's it's just a case of Allen East did what they did and Marion Local is just really good at what they do here's Nathan Busher with the carry and he's got some space ahead of him to the 40 out across midfield and pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line, and Braylon Kennedy, the kicker, saving what uh, might have been a kickoff return for a touchdown. So the Mary Local Flyers will have a short field again as we take a look at this one one more time. Yeah, and we've seen uh, Mary Local with short field all night long, and this is going to be no exception here. A little hesitation here, and I thought he might be able to get by him, but uh, good job, as you mentioned, by the kicker making the tackle there. So back at it are the Mary Local Flyers on first down, and this is going to be handoff right up the middle. Going left tackle, and that's going to be number 45, Parker Hess with the carry. Yeah, and we're going to see some, uh, some different personnel in this second half by Marion Local for sure. Trey Hensley and Joe Hole in on the stop for Allen East. Second down and four. Yeah, Parker Hess averages 4.1 per carry. And now here is Laos. That technical pass, and the ball came out. I think the ball came out. No, it didn't. Laos kept on it the whole time. Yeah, and that's probably a play that we've seen now probably eight times, maybe ten times this game. They've run this little short. It's just a little short inside pass to Laos, and he runs uh, around the edge looking for a seam, and, and they've averaged, uh, you know, five, six, seven yards every time they've run that play. So a flag on the play against Allen East. So that was a Betty's Foods first down, and now there'll be additional yardage tacked onto it as they're going to place the ball at the 14-yard line. So that's going to put... The Flyers in the Kneecamp Farm Market Red Zone in an opportunity to put more points on the board. Again, running clock here in Wapak. Allen East trailing 41-0 to Marion Local. And the handoff, this is once again looking for Hess, and he is going to be stopped in the backfield hole. Uh, Cade Wireman in on the stop as well. And I also uh, think that Gage Wireman was back there for yeah. Allen East but Hole making first contact for the Mustangs. 
Yeah, just a really good job of reading that play and getting a, an early jump. He came in untouched. Loss of about three on that play. So seeing some substitutions, as no doubt Tim Goodwin wants to get some of the other guys on the team some experience. And there are a lot of guys that Mary Local can swap out. Here is Hess again on second down and long, and he picks up about six yards. Well, you mentioned that uh, getting other guys in, you know, to get experience. One of the notable guys who are absent tonight that I haven't seen yet tonight is Darren Meyer. Indeed. And uh, he, he was a critical part of their defense and their offense, and, uh, of course, he's not playing tonight. So Darren Meyer is out, but has – Marion Local has not missed a beat, and that's the thing. Like if you look at the, you look at the stats for these, and of course we go over the stats when we prepare for these matchups, and you look at the stats for the Marion Local players, and there's there's nothing that, there's no seriously eye popping numbers on the side of the Marion Local offense, and the Flyers are going to call timeout. It's Metzger Financial Services timeout, and they will talk it over. We will take a timeout as well. 8.03 remaining. Marion Local on top, 41-0. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. You know, back to what you were saying there, eye-popping stats, and nobody really stands out from Marion Local. You, you know, that's the great part about the Marion Local team and, and what makes them so difficult to defend is that they have so many weapons. Yeah. They... They really share the football with all those weapons, so you can't really key on one player. Like a lot of teams have one exceptional running back or they have an outstanding quarterback. Marion Local just has a, a group of players that all do their job and do it very well. Has pass is incomplete. And yeah, that's exactly the point that I wanted to make is that there's, there, there's so many different guys who are involved in the offense. It's not a, you know, Amazing quarterback with 3,000 passing yards, which Alan East went up against last week in Tri-Village. It's not a running back that has 2,000 yards that the entire offense is kind of keyed around. A wide receiver, you see guys that are, they, they do a lot of things really well. Nathan Busher, who has a touchdown tonight, 18, he came into the game with 18 catches for 346 yards. Uh, Darren Meyer, who isn't in tonight, 23 touchdowns, 806 yards. Those are great numbers. Kyle Audi, 888 yards. Drew lost 473 yards. Just a lot of guys producing for Marion Local, and including this guy, Tate Hess. Spin move, hitting the B button there and getting inside the 10 down to the six yard line. He only came into the game with 444 yards rushing, so not a rushing quarterback per se, but he's done had a great job with his legs tonight too. Yeah, that's a lot of yards for a quarterback though at 400 yards, especially when, when, when you don't run it that often each game. I mean, he averages 8.2 a carry. That's a pretty good uh, average for a quarterback who, who you know, when you factor in, uh, you know, sacks and tackles for loss when they have to run the football and pass plays, uh, that's a pretty good, uh, you know, that's a pretty good number. So an attempt on fourth down is stopped. So first drive that doesn't come up in points for Murray Local and Allen East with the football and not getting a whole lot Check on first hole, down as whole with the carry stopped at the five yard line. Lost yep, so you gotta feel good if you're out on the east there, you know, a little bend, but don't break. Second down and 12. First time, as we said, Allen East able to stop Marion Local. Their first third down conversion, that didn't work. And then tried on fourth down, couldn't get going. Now second down for the Mustangs in 12. Hershberger in. Pass is caught to Lehman. He's tackled around the nine-yard line. Only the second catch of the game for Keaton Lehman. And those those connections haven't been as readily available for Hershberger tonight. No, but I like this play call and this play design. They they roll Hershberger out just a little bit, shortens that pass, gives it a higher chance for success, and, and, and was successful. Didn't pick up a lot of yardage but it gave him uh, an opportunity. There's Berger on a draw, a nice hurdle there, and still make a guy's miss going off to the left side, and it's a foot race now, one guy to beat, and is he gonna get the corner? He's down the sideline to the 30, cutting back inside, nice running play by Jacob Hersberger. 
making some things happen for the Mustangs down at the 15-yard line, the longest play of the night by far for the Mustangs. Good for a Betty's Foods first down, and Hershberger showing some of that escapability that he has. Yeah, and this is what I expected from him. This is what he does. He's been doing it all year long, making big plays, making exciting plays. He's like a human highlight film. And uh, as you can see on this play, he eludes several tacklers. He's got wheels. He's got speed. He's got moves. And this is a big play for Alan East. And it also puts him into the knee camp farm market red zone. Ball at the 16-yard line. And now Hole will get the ball. And he's across the 15 to the 14-yard line before he is dropped. I want to give Dan Bruns a little credit on that last tackle for Marion Local. That was a touchdown saving tackle as you get a good look at this replay. Hole's tough. He's just physical. 5'8, 205. That was an 80 yard run for Jacob Hershberger two plays ago. Now Hershberger throwing it up on oh. first down, and the pass is intercepted, and this is going to be a house call. Griffin Brun's going to take it all the way back for a Citizens National Bank touchdown. Wow, and I didn't catch the number, Patrick, but Hershberger was hit right as he was partway into his throwing motion, and it took enough off the football that it just hung up there a little while, and you can see a pick six. Here's the east side replay, and, of course, there's the – Interception by Bruns, and he had nothing but green and white and eventually Wapak red in front of him as he takes that one all the way back. Looks like 85, 90 yards for the pick six. Yeah, after Allen East had had a big play there and an opportunity in the red zone, it's immediately taken away. Now Bill's on to attempt the innovative office solutions extra point. And that one is up and good. 4-13 remaining in the third quarter. Marion Local with a 48-0 lead over Allen East. We'll be back. <music> Betty's Natural Foods is your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. Betty's our first down sponsor tonight. And it was a Betty's Natural Foods first down for Jacob Hershberger on an 80-yard run. But then... A Griffin Bruns interception turns into an 85 yard touchdown. Interception return for a touchdown for Marion Local Flyers on top, 48 0. And that was the, the most success that Alan East had had on a drive. And then pressure came. I think Hershberger was hit as he threw. So, as you mentioned, the, the ball had something taken off of it, and Bruns did the rest. Yeah, he did. He had cut in front of that football. It just hung up there a little while. And like I said, it, Hershberger was being hit, so that momentum, that pass velocity was greatly reduced. And, uh, you know, once again, Marin Local makes you pay. Knuckleballer fielded at the 30-yard line down to the 39-yard line. The return by Caden Hedrick, number 14 for the Mustangs. And as you can see on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, we are in a running clock here with Marion Local with a 48-point lead. You got a lot of new numbers out there on defense for Marion Local. The Griffin Bruns was one of those new numbers. I don't believe he was one of the starters coming in tonight, came in as one of the substitutions, and uh, boy, did he make his presence felt immediately. Well, you can tell the starters on defense, none of them had long sleeves on. They all had bare skin hanging out. They were ready to play and kind of mentally tough in there. The, the second group, you know, they stand on the sidelines waiting for their turn. So most of them got on long sleeves and trying to stay warm out there. Hershberger connects with Lehman for about five yards. Second down and five coming up. That's the second catch for Lehman tonight. As, uh, as I mentioned, he comes in with their, uh, uh, I'm sorry, third catch tonight. He comes in as their number one receiver. Hand off to Hole on second down, goes off tackle left side and pushing the pile ahead and he gets the Betty's natural foods first down. Well, Alan East uh, has made some adjustments at halftime. They had that big play by Hershberger, as you mentioned. They pick up a first down here. Um, 
you know, unfortunately in between there was a pick six, but uh, they're moving the football a little bit here in the second half. So first down and 10, blitz coming. Hershberger gets it away, pass is complete, hole, making a guy miss at the 50, going to across the 40, down at the 38 yard line. It's gonna be very close to a Betty's Natural Foods first down. They're gonna mark him about a yard short. Yeah, he did a nice job of making a couple guys miss and then extra effort there, lunge towards the line. Came up just a little bit short here, but I really like his effort. You see here he makes a couple guys miss for Marion Local, was able to elude them and then pushes forward and just short of that first down line to gain. And they're gonna get a penalty here. So. They just. It's a five yard. Of the five yard variety, it looks like. Yeah, it must have been. Uh, I don't know what the penalty was. We didn't get a word. And here's Hole with the run and still running tough, getting to the 30 yard line before he's brought down. Five yard pickup. Allen East continuing to compete as we come up on a minute left in the third quarter. Yeah, and I feel like uh, he gained a lot more yards than it actually moved the. the, the Line of scrimmage, he only actually gained about a yard on that play. But he was breaking tackles and, and uh, continuing to move his legs. Under a minute now, here is second down. Hershberger scrambling, looking, throwing, pass incomplete. Was down there looking for Hopkins, number six. And that'll bring up third down. Yeah, that ball had some sauce on it. Yeah. I mean, he, he was, it was not very far of a pass, about eight yards, and Hershberger put some heat on it. So Hershberger and Hopkins were talking things over as they get lined up. 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Blitz coming. Hershberger takes off running, goes right side. The ball's ball loose. Out, and into the hands. How about that? Right place at the right time, Troy Wildermuth and the 5'9", 245-pound senior. I mean, he's a senior, but, you know, hey, there's always time to try him out at wide receiver. Yeah, I, th I, w I think that was 52 Gage Wireman. Uh, I think you're right. That. that is 52. Indeed, you're right. That's Gage Wireman. Yeah, and a lineman's dream, hey, right? The ball pops up, and he gets it, falls right to him. Bang, you can see here. You can try him out at wide receiver, too. Yeah. And uh, he knew exactly what to do with it. He, he did. caught it, took off running. Caught it and advanced it. So that brings the third quarter to an end. 48 nothing. Marion Local, 12 more minutes. Here we go. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Switching sides of the field as we head to the fourth quarter. Hershberger with the pass on fourth down, showed the punt, decided to go for it, and just over the outstretched arms of Keaton Lehman. That'll be a turnover on downs, and it's one of those where, you know what, why not? Try a jump pass. Why not? Uh, it, that's the right place on the field to do that, to take that chance, that risk. Uh, it was almost successful. It looked like he was open, just uh, not able to connect there. So Marion Local takes over on downs. It'll be interesting to me, Patrick. Uh, Don Kemper, you know, the league commissioner for mm -hmm. the MAC. I wonder if uh, I wonder if he'll be here tonight to help with the trophy presentations. You know, he likes to show up at those special events and it timing and uh, you know. Indeed, he very well might be here. Yes. So some. New guys checking in for Marion Local. Of course, Parker Hess still doing the carries. Justin Nauf, who saw some time this season at the quarterback position earlier for Marion Local in there at quarterback, as I would imagine uh, Tate Hess's uh, evening is done. Yeah, and this is the opportunity, uh, of course, to get those guys that you're going to rely on next year 
get them some experience in, in a very important game like this, like a regional final. Not only that, but uh, as we mentioned, you never know if you get a player hurt in the next two games and somebody's got to come off the bench. If you've had some experience and a little playing time, then you understand what needs to be done. And coaches like that, coaches like when, you know, they've got a little breathing room in a playoff, in a game that's high leverage, and you can get some of your younger guys in there. And a team like Marion Local finds themselves not only in a lot of high leverage games, but they find themselves with big leads in high leverage games to where uh, Coach Goodwin, he can put guys in there and, and, you know, feel free to run the offense, feel free to learn what it's like to play football at this level so that next year when they're, or a couple of years when they're an upperclassman, Hey, we've we've been the, we've been here before. We've done this a few times. Right, success feeds success, no question about it. Hess once again spun around, initially stopped in the backfield. Instead, he's able to pick up an additional yard there, hole in on the stop. This will be win number thirty in a row for the Marion Local Flyers. We look at this hand, uh, this replay here of the of the do -si do between Hess and Hole. Yeah, and you know, we, we haven't talked about Hess tonight, but he came into the game too. One of those guys with not eye-popping stats, but he got 218 yards uh, rushing the football this year, coming off the bench, you know, with that second mm -hmm. team mop-up duty. Averages 4.1 yards a carry and has two touchdowns. So handoff. Going inside down the 45-yard line. I really think one of the things that has gone well tonight for Alan East is that interior defense, that front five that they've got there. I want to talk about that. Caden Hedrick, Jack Hole, Brogan Paxton, Gage Wireman, Keaton Miller, Lane Wodermuth, and Dalton Smith have done a little backup work there at tackle, but they've done a really good job tonight on that inside runs and that inside interior defense. Um, it's really Marion Local has done their damage on the outsides. Flyers once again putting together a tremendous game plan to get the job done. Here is third down and short, and Hess is going to get some help, and he's going to get the Betty's Natural Foods first down. More moving the sticks for the Flyers. And Marion Local is moving on down the field and moving towards another regional championship as the Flyers looking to advance to another state semifinal where it appears that uh, Columbus Grove is awaiting them in the wings. Columbus yeah. Grove with a big win tonight. Yeah, and it's interesting because Grove's, uh, you know, they've been there, done that as well. And um, so so they're back again, and that's good to see. You know, here, here we are with two Northwest Conference teams in regional finals, Columbus Grove and and Allen East, and, and uh, you know, one of them is having success. One of them has come up against a juggernaut in Marion Local, but uh, it says a, quite a bit, I think, for the Northwest Conference for this area of football as well. And of course, the game between Columbus Grove and Allen East earlier this season, uh, effectively deciding the NWC a seven nothing game. So if you're a fan of offense, that might not have been your, uh, your cup of tea, but it was a defensive struggle that uh, Allen East pitched the shutout against the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. And by virtue of that, the Allen East Mustangs putting together a, a tremendous season. This will be a senior class that is remembered for a long time. First undefeated conference record in the NWC since 1990. Um, second regional final appearance uh, all time in the school. Uh, they did a lot of things really well. This team had a lot of success and again, no one likes to have their season end with a, a blowout loss, but you, you can't focus on that if you're Joel Billings and company, if you're all these seniors, if you're this large senior class, you have to focus on what good did we do over the last four years, and this team has accomplished quite a bit. I agree 100%, and uh, you, you know, un unfortunately, or, or I would say fortunately for our area, we, we have Marion Local in this area, and that's a sort of a bar that is a, a, on a different scale than the, than the rest of the teams. and. And, you know, as, as we've been talking here, Marion Local's second group is in executing the offense flawlessly and moving the football down the field slowly. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a case where, again, I think it's just excellent coaching from very young, youth-oriented football all the way up through. Guys know what their job is. They do it extremely well. 
and uh, size necessarily of the the physical size doesn't always matter. It's it's a lot of it is technique, and and and, and knowing what to do, and then executing that with the mental mindset that you're going to succeed. And I think that's what Marion Local brings a lot more. The the expectation is to do well. Period. Here's the replay of that pitch to Hess and. You know, on the sports report this week, I had a chance to talk with Diana Kramer, who the New Bremen girls volleyball team won another state title. And one of the things she mentioned to me was she's a second grade teacher there as well. So mm -hmm. she has the opportunity to start, you know, peaking girls' interest for volleyball in second grade. Like, hey, how would you, how yeah. would you like to be a part of this? And right. she's, uh, she's persuasive, and, and she gets the parents involved, and she gets the family involved to make sure that there's a lot of girls that are involved in the volleyball program. Yeah, somebody yeah. said they were doing sets, volleyball sets in the uh, second grade classroom. No? Huh? No. Sure. Just you bet. I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, hey, I'll, I'll ask Diana, but I'll yeah. bet you tell me that's, yeah. that could be a, that could be a recess, like an inside recess yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 you know, they're, they're working on volleyball techniques. And, right. But if you look at the sideline for Mary and local, and, you know, if you compare it to Allen East, and Allen East, of course, they're both D6 schools. But you have 70-some kids that come out for Marion Local. You've got 70-some kids that come out for Coldwater. The The community is invested. The school is invested. Uh, they, You are thinking about playing football for Marion Local from the time you're very young. And same thing goes for Coldwater. Same thing goes for a lot of these small-town schools that have success. Right. And sustained success brings people, you know, because you want to be a part of that. And, and, and you want to be a part of that, so you work hard at it at a young age. And, and when you work hard consistently, I think that's where you get improvement and you get excellence and, and, and you continue to rise. You know, I've always said, you know, everybody works hard during practice and games. It's the people that are working hard in the off season that sit, really separate themselves. Now with the pass completion getting out to Andrew Pullman, six foot, 160 pounds, sophomore. He makes the catch there, and that advances the sticks once again to Betty's Natural Foods first down. A couple of Betty's Foods first down on this drive, and they are just outside the Kneecamp Farm Market red zone. Yeah, and let's give Knopf some credit there. Justin Knopf, he's 15-26 and 26 coming into the game, 58%, uh, which is very good as a quarterback, 127 yards and two touchdowns. Three and a half remaining in this one, and the handoff. Going for it a couple yards. Knopf. Yeah, I like that. Hole was convinced that uh, Knopf still had the football. <laughs> yeah. He made Joe, sure he wasn't going anywhere. Joe Hole tackled him about eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. He thought he had made a big play. Yeah. Coming up under three minutes on this running clock. Marion Local up 48 nothing. As we, as we said, come under three minutes. In this contest, here's the handoff to Hess once again. Swung down around the 19-yard line. That'll bring up third down. And I would imagine that the number of plays that they're going to run are going to wind down here pretty soon as they'll get to where they can't have a fourth down. Possibly. We'll see what happens here on third down. And then they will wrap this up. So Yeah, Alan, uh, Marion Loco has had the football now for almost the entire fourth quarter on this drive. Yeah, yeah. This, this drive started at about their own four-yard line, five-yard line. I believe you're right. I think I think Alan East had it for the first play. It was a fourth down try, and we're yeah. going to have a – I would imagine a false start called yep. against Marion Local. But that was a fourth down try to begin the fourth quarter, I believe, for Alan East. And then Marion Local took over, and because of the running clock and just methodically moving the ball down the field, they have been able to uh, drain this clock pretty much all the way. And coming up on a minute 36, and I would imagine we might see two, maybe three more plays in this one before they wrap it up. Yeah, depending on how long they take here on the uh, play clock, Alan East may not get the football back. Hand off, going right up the middle. That'll bring up fourth down. 
Yeah, so Allen East, uh, so if, if if Marion Local doesn't pick up the first down here, Allen East will get the football back with about 30 seconds left. So a fourth down try coming up possibly. Of course, also kneeling down as an option, giving Allen East the football back. In any case, Marion Local is going to improve to 14 and 0 on the season, and they're going to put it up. Knopf going end zone, and the pass is complete. It's a touchdown. touchdown. Wow. So Knopf connecting with Andrew Pullman to cap this one off. So the fourth down conversion is a touchdown for Marion Local, and it's 54 nothing Flyers. Well, Tim Goodwin showed no mercy here. The second team in the game. They want to have some success, too. They go for it, and Knopf puts it up there, perfectly placed. And another six goes up on the board for Marion Local, 54 points. Citizens National Bank touchdown, and the Innovative Office Solutions extra point is coming up. And some of the fans that were wanting to go home, groaning a little bit because the clock has stopped. <laughs> Kick is up and good, 55 nothing. Double nickel here in Wapak. Tonight's Mary Local Premier sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. 55 nothing. Mary and Local on top of Allen East. A touchdown, Knopf to Pullman to cap this one off, and then we'll have the kickoff here in the final 31 seconds of this one as Marion Local will improve to 14 and 0 on the season. They will wrap up another regional final win. Yeah, and congratulations to Allen East. They're going to end up uh, 13 and 2, but again, an excellent season, a great season, and uh, ha they had nothing to hang their heads about. They've had a great season. Absolutely not. Mustangs having a terrific 2022 campaign. And Hole with the return is going to reverse field. And Hole has some seam, gets a nice block from Lehman, gets two nice blocks from Lehman. And they're going to try and do something as the clock runs out. If Hole gets it in, they'll keep the shutout. And oh. Marion Local preserving the shutout. And the Flyers storm the field. As wow. that, that, might, that might have been one of the biggest plays of the game for the Mary local side as they preserve the shutout here. As they hold on, <laughs> they hold on. 55 nothing, Mary local. Post game activities coming up when we come back here on WOSN. Welcome back on the field here at Wapak. Uh, Mary Local with a convincing win here with head coach Tim Goodwin. Uh, coach, what about the game plan that you brought into this game? Worked so well against what had been a pretty good Allen East offense. Yeah, we got off to a fast start, you know, with the weather the way it was. We kind of had the wind a little bit in our favor that first quarter, and, and we kind of dominated the field position, made them punt, and, and got uh, good field position that whole first quarter, and we were able to take advantage of it. Were there any wrinkles to the offense as you added? Kyle Lottie and Drew Lash really got, it seemed like they got into the offense pretty, pretty early. Uh, it's pretty much the way we've been the last uh, probably four or five weeks. Um, Darren didn't play tonight, so you know we had to juggle some kids around, and I think for the most part they stepped in there pretty nice and, and did their job. Defensively, you know, one of the things that's been talked about is how stout you guys have been uh, defensively. What do you attribute that to? You guys are on something of a, I don't know about his historic pace, but you guys just do not give up points. Uh, we're, we're just experienced. Uh, we're, we're fortunate to have three linebackers that started for three years, and Drew Seitz started for four. We've got good players at all three levels, and uh, you know we're all on the same page. State semifinals coming up next week, taking on uh, Columbus Grove. Any advantage to a team playing a team that's uh, closer to the area than what you normally play? Uh, you know, we, we've played Columbus Grove a couple times now in the playoffs, I think in the state semifinals. Uh, had some uh, good games there. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll study them, and uh, we get to practice on Thanksgiving, so that's always fun. Fireball once again, Coach. Congratulations, and good luck for hopefully two more games this season. All right, appreciate it. All right, thank you very much, Coach. I want to bring in Kyle Audi, our Stanley Hustle Award winner. And, Kyle, first of all, congratulations. A terrific game. Um, what did you guys see in the Allen East defense that allowed you guys to go off like you did tonight? 
Well, there was definitely some flaws in their defense, and we kind of found them and capitalized on them, and we just made plays when we had the ball in our hands. Hey, I want to talk about the plays you made. You had two, you had four touchdowns total, two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. You had over 100 yards just in your touchdown plays. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, you got to make plays in games like this. It's a state tournament, win or go home, and you just got to find a way to win, make plays. State semifinal, how does it feel to be two games away from a state championship? Feels great. You know, we uh, it's definitely a tradition to get back there, but we work we worked this hard to get this far, and it definitely pays off in the end. Yeah, it's very few programs I can say it's a tradition to end up in the state or near state every single year. Uh, Kyle Lotti, Sally Hustle Award winner, congratulations. Yep, nice game, man. Thank get you. ready for next week. Good luck. All right, I'm going to bring Scott Nurse in here. And uh, just we expected, most people expected a pretty dominating performance from Marion Local, and that's really exactly what we saw tonight. Yeah, it was, no question. Uh, it was a little more dominating than I expected. Um, but I think, uh, again, it was part, partly due to the fact that Marion Local got going early. And, uh, you know, once you get that freight train going, it's hard to hard to stop it. And we heard that from Coach Tim Goodwin. Like, they got some plays going. They were able to make some things happen. And once that juggernaut got going, there just really was no stopping it. We were in a running clock for the entirety of the second half. Right, right. And Marion Local is good. They're good. And, and you know, uh, I, I, I feel like uh, they're on the road to another state championship. Columbus Grove will have something to say about that next week. And what should be another matchup between Mac and NWC, Columbus Grove, losing to this Allen East team earlier this season in a defensive struggle. We'll see how that one goes. That should be a great matchup. Marion Local taking on Columbus Grove in the state semifinal. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for us tonight from Wapak Ford Field. Mercy Health Wapak Ford Field. Uh, let's go in some place and uh, get some warmth, especially for our crew. I want to thank everyone who helped us out tonight. For Scott Nurse, I'm Patrick Hamler. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time here on WOSN.